like that. Don't worry, they're in Hong Kong, they're in China. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you going to do? Where are you going to work if, you, if that's the only option? What, you're just going to stay home and not work? All right, think about it. CCTV, why would bosses do that? They do that so they can still have centralised control over you. All right, it's like, like an action control over you. You know, to the furthest extent, the perfect control from a boss's point of view is like action control. If I have an action control, I have clarity about what you can do, what you cannot do. Let me repeat. Through action controls, I have clarity. And I give you clarity about what you can do, what you cannot do. When I have clarity, then I, have, I sleep peaceful at night. Are you with me on that? Okay. So, CCTV might give me clarity. Okay. You may not feel comfortable with that, but it gives me the boss clarity. All right. So, knowledge transfer costs. If we automate, if we have some technology, or if we can aggregate the knowledge, then maybe we don't have to decentralize. But, because I want to get bigger, I want to have 10,000, then 100,000 salespeople, but I don't want to have 100,000, what do we do, what do we do, what do we do, what do we do? Okay. I need to decentralize. I got no choice. I have to. As soon as I decentralize, I have a, what? I have control problems. All right? Mainly agency costs. All right? So we have noise transfer costs, we have agency costs. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, let me ask you a simple question. What was the number one concept that I have introduced in the last half hour that we haven't really looked at before? Yan Hui? What have I introduced this morning? Pardon? The picture. The picture? No, but the concept. What is the co picture representing? What was the number one concept? Knowledge transfer. Knowledge transfer costs. That's something we haven't talked about before. We talked about direction, hard work, limitation, but we didn't talk about knowledge transfer costs. You understand, class? All right? So you're thinking, oh, is this a fourth thing? Is it, is it DHL and then K? <laughs> yes and no, but probably no. Okay, relax. Relax, okay? But it's important, okay? Knowledge transfer costs are really critical. All right? So far, the last four or five weeks, we've talked about control costs. Control, out of control. How do we avoid that? Okay? And how do we analyze it so we can actually come up with solutions to control it better? avoid that in the future. Now we're talking about the other side. What do we what do we decentralize? If we want to grow and have full control, no out of control situation, well then we should centralize, right? Care. Okay? Okay? But most organizations don't do that. Why don't they do C, A, R and E? Okay? Because sometimes they want to grow, keep profits for themselves. So organizations do decentralize. That's a fact. Okay? Once they do, they do that to manage knowledge transfer costs, there's agency costs involved. All right? So organizations do decentralize because they want to get larger. And knowledge transfer costs is a major driver of that. If agency costs were first and foremost, front of people's minds, they would not decentralize. Okay? People think, oh, we can decentralize if we have the right controls in place so we don't have out of control situation. You see that? But we know from the cases you looked at, there's 
there's always out of control situation. Every company around the world has a what? Is out of control in some way. Every company, every organization. All right? Uh, every boss around the world wants to grow their company what? Larger. Okay? The implication is that the trend is towards decentralization not centralization the implication is that C is not the trend okay all right once we have decentralized so we know now you know why we decentralize okay so the second part is if we decentralize, then we need a system of assigned responsibility. Then we need to measure performance. And then, once we measure performance, we need to have rewards. I want to show you a short video. The next video will be etched on your mind forever. How many of you have seen The Mentalist? Okay, you need to pay attention next time you watch it. What type of car is The Mentalist driving? Okay. I think um, let's get this um, thing moving. I think we've got something. Here's a short video about how to take the assessment. All right, history. Um, this is important. All right, remember four pitches. There are four pitches. What are the four pitches? The brain. And which one are you? Okay, good, 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 good. And what's the second picture? Oh, what? Sorry, what was it? Agency costs. All right, Ken Lay. All right, Enron. Okay, the reason why Sabine's oxy came to being. Okay, all right. Uh, next is this car. Okay, and finally is the Valentine. All right. So I want to show you this car. This car will bring a lot of ideas together. So I want you to watch it and tell me what's missing. Okay. You ready? Let's just pay attention. Just stop it there. All right. Okay. So what's missing? Yeah. And is the car in balance? So what's this car got to do with the next concept I'm going to teach you? A three-legged stool. Yeah. What's the relevance? This is the only four-wheel car in the world that you can drive with three wheels. Yes. Isn't that amazing? Huh? Now, class, I can guarantee you one thing. You're always going to be amazed in my class. All right? And it may be... It may have nothing to do with what's in the textbook, but at least you'll have something to go out of the classroom with, all right? Now you know the car, the only car in the world that you can drive with three wheels, okay? And stay balanced. Stay balanced. And that's the next concept, the three-legged stool. 
you need to be able to balance three things. We'll just stop that uh, right and bring it just we'll bring this back to the PowerPoint. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Alright? So we the next idea is the three legged stool. And the idea is we need to have balance of those three legs. What are those three legs? Decentralization, measurement, and yeah. See this book here? This book is, uh, this is one of the, Jensen, one of the fathers of the modern finance, Jensen Meckling. Okay, going back 20, 30 years ago, they wrote this fa famous paper on capital theory. So here we have uh, Jensen, and in this book, he talks about three legged stool knowledge transfer costs control agency costs and balancing all these things. They talk about that three-legged stool. There's other books that talk about it too. Uh, Brickley, Smith and Zimmerman is another book that talks about three-legged stool. It's as an organisational architecture. If you take away one of the legs, it will fall over. Okay? How do you avoid, how do you keep the balance? You have no legs. That is, you centralise everything, you just have total control. Okay, so let's draw a stool with no legs. Have you seen a stool with no legs? Put your hand up. It, let me draw one with no legs. Okay, there's a stool, no legs. All right, total balance. Okay, this stool is centralized. Centralized. That means you haven't decentralized, so you've got no agency costs and everything's perfect, like a one-person organisation. You have total control. You have no out-of-control problems. Why? Because you are your own boss. If you perform bad in sales, that's your own fault. It's not an agency cost. There's no agency cost at all. Everything is yourself, right? But suddenly, you want to grow. Well, you need to decentralise, right? and maybe you want to grow a little bit more and then you want to grow a little bit more why? because now you got 999, now you got 999, now you got 9999 people working for you knowledge transfer costs start to become a burden right so you need to decentralize you with me? that's the first leg of the stool now can this leg stand with one leg? Can this stool stand with a... No, it can't. It will fall over. So what do you do? Well, as we grow, we need to... We need to measure more. And measure more. And measure more. So, class, this is very, very important. It's very important before you come out of the class today that you learn that second leg. That second leg is called... Sorry, I didn't hear that. It's called, no, 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 measurement. All right, let's do it once again. You ready? The second leg is called measurement. All right, I'm serious. A measurement is a lot of things in the organization. If you can't measure something, you cannot see it. If you cannot see something, you cannot manage it. And why are you working in an organization? So you can manage something. It's simple. You don't have to read 10 chapters of a book to get that. Okay? So, what's very important in every organization is that's it, yeah. Just relax, all right? Come on, you're only fourth year undergraduate, all right? Measurement, all right? So, as you get larger, we've got to measure more, all right? And then finally, if we want to measure more, then we need to have incentives, yes. But here's the key thing. You need to know why. Here's the learning point. Here's what you need to take away from today's class. Let's get to the point of the photos. 
we have we have a brain okay we have Ken Lay. Ken Lay represents what? Agency costs. The brain represents? Okay. Why do we decentralize? Because of the which picture? No, because of the brain, okay? Don't don't complicate it with knowledge transfer costs, alright? You decentralize because the brain is limited, alright? Alright? Limits of the brain is your limits of knowledge. I think you you'll remember that much easier, okay? Just think of that, alright? You decentralize because of the limits, right? But as soon as you decentralize, now you've got a problem of people like Ken Lay, alright? That will go and do whatever they want to do for their own wealth development, yes? Alright, so we have those two things we're balancing up. So you need, once you decentralize, you need some measurement and you need some incentives to deal with what? That's alright, they're just cutting the grass. The grass is out of control. Okay. Ryan, watch your head, it's in the middle of the camera. Alright. <laughs> alright, so we have it's okay. You, it's lovely. It's all. It just. It's okay. All right. So, what you need? Here's what you need to take away today. All right, Kelvin. Here's what you need to know. You don't need me to tell you those three parts. What you need to understand is, if you take one of those away, what happens? You need to. You need to be. Okay, overbalances. The car will overbalance, but this car doesn't. But the average car will overbalance. All right, the stool will what happen? Fall over. Okay, you need to picture that. Three legged stool. Organizations grow larger. Why? Because bosses want, they want their empire. Okay, no one wants to get smaller. Okay, we understand that. As we get larger, we need to extend these two legs here. So we don't have out of control. Now, here's the thing you need to take away. We're going to have a five minute break. Here's the thing you need to take away. If we have decentralization and we have, what's this one? No, no, no. What, what's this one? Measurement, okay? It's measurement, alright? You've got to make it very clear, okay? So if we have decentralization and measurement, if we have these two and do not have incentives, what happens? Pardon? The stool will fall over. Huh? The stool will fall over. Yeah, I know, but why? Why does it fall over? Here's the big thing. Why does it fall over? What can you picture? Pitch yourself in an organization. You've got authority, there's lots of measures going on, but there's no incentive. So how do you feel? Huh? Pardon? Not motivated. So which are the DHL? H. H, yeah, no H. You see? Class, are you getting something here? Alright? Alright? So then we lose our H, yeah? Alright? See, measurement gives us good people controls. Measurement can help with action controls. It's incentives that help us with results controls. Measurement can help with results controls too. But results controls need incentives. Action controls do not. People controls don't necessarily need incentives. Okay? Right, decentralization. It could be, it can be mainly people controls. It can be results controls. How can decentralization be people controls? How can decentralization be people controls? Exactly. Right. So you give authority to someone, and then they feel empowered. So then 
they naturally can be motivated. Eh? All right. So uh, I think what I'm doing here is relating this to the P A R, right? Okay. So you can see a relationship there. I want you to you need to understand that. The same thing you need to understand is, all right, we only have two of the three, then we lose H. What if we have decentralization, we have incentives, but no measurement? We don't have any measurement. What happens? Quick. I want you to picture yourself in an organization. You've got lots of authority. Okay, lots of authority. You come into work each day, you've got lots of authority. All right? And there's bonuses paid at the end of each year. Big bonuses, whopping big bonuses, 20%, 30%. Wow. So what's the question on your mind? Yeah, you won't know. What are they based on? Oh, don't worry, don't worry. We don't do measurement here. We don't do that. At the end of the year, I will sit down in my dark room and work out who gets what. How would you feel? Uh, little direction, yeah, you're going to lose a bit of direction. All right, what else? Are you going to be motivated? But I give you a whopping bonus. Why can't you be motivated? I do not know what to do to get that bonus. Yes, okay. All right, so therefore we're going to lose that. Okay. All right, let's go through what if we don't decentralize, but we have lots of measures, we have lots of incentives. All right, I want you to think of the other organization. I want you to think another organization. Class, this is serious. You could be working in one of these organizations next year because every firm has a what? Out of control situation. An out of control situation can be where there's an imbalance between. Authority, measurement, and rewards. Okay, if that's out of balance, you're going to have out of control somewhere. Okay, so let's have a look at the last scenario. We have lots of measurement. We measure everything. When you come into work, you've got to clock in, clock out. That's an action control, but we're measuring when you come in. Oh, let's have CCT cameras watching over you. Make sure you don't do more than 30 minutes of Facebook every day or, or Weibao in China. Okay? Yes? All right, we can do that. Ah, organizations in Hong Kong do that. Have CCTV watching over you. How many of you like working in one of those organizations? Okay, all right. So we have lots of measurement. What about lots of incentives? Oh, you've got bonus. Come and work for our company. We're going to give you a bonus. All right, lots of bonus. But, oh, oh, when you come in, you've got no authority. Oh, you do photocopying. Okay. Oh, do this. Do this. Here are the steps. You can't deviate. You must follow. Lots of action controls. You have no authority. Customer rings up, asks a question, you can't answer it. Oh, pass it on to your superior. Customer asks for a discount, sorry, pass on to the superior. Follow the policy. No decentralization. How do you feel? No motivated? Okay, so we're losing our no hard work. Uh, you have lots of direction, right? Because centralized. All right? Full action controls. It's like total action controls, right? Because you step one, step two, step three, step four. You do this, do this, do this, do this. Okay? And you have no autonomy about what you can do, can't do. You're not going to be motivated. Yes, you should be. I'm going to give you a big whopping bonus end of the year. All right? But it has very little association with the effort you put in. You just turn up to work, clock in, clock out, clock in, clock out. You become a cog in the wheel. How many of you want to be a cog in the wheel? I'm serious. Kelvin, do you want to be a cog in the wheel? No. But how many of you uh, have done job interviews so far? Hands up. Yeah, and the organization probably interviewed with will have you as a cog in the wheel anyway. 
if you stay there for long enough. Yeah. Come for a career with us. Stay for 30 years, you become partner, make lots of money and then you die. <laughs> Alright? And you'll probably die in the office at 10 o'clock every night, rather, uh, 20 years before you get buried. Yeah, that's good. Cog in the wheel. Alright, the system is all set up. We've got a lovely career for you. Welcome to the modern society. Okay, good. It's okay. Or, are you going to be like Cindy, who joined our interview team on Sunday, no, Saturday, last Saturday. She came and joined our team for the day just to find out what it's like to work on the China Supply 1000 work for Silk Road Associates as a junior research analyst. And um, Cindy worked with uh, a big four company. I won't mention it, all right? It's one of the big four companies. She's been there for nearly 12 months and she's ready to leave. <coughs> she's had enough. <laughs> I'm serious. She, she says to me, oh, I said, what do you want to leave? Oh, I've had enough. I, I want to change. And I'm thinking, wow. I wonder if she said that in a job interview 12 months earlier, whether she would have got the job. And you know what? These, that same big four accounting firm is hiring 400 more graduates in the next month. 400 just, just coming in. It's like just a big... You just become cog in the wheel, All right? So this person wants to leave after 12 months, okay? Great, career is fantastic, but uh, be realistic about what you personally want, okay? All right, and uh, have fun. Don't get too serious about the correlation between your grades and the type of job that you get, okay? All right? Just try many jobs. That's my uh, encouragement. All right, so most of these jobs you'll start with, you won't have much authority. There'll be lots of measurement. You might be bonus. Bonus, no, not after the first year. Maybe second, third year, yes. Definitely in the 10th year. Oh, yes, and the 20th year, and the 30th year. Oh, yes, you'll be a star. Okay, so put your hand up if you want to stay the company for 20 years. What's going on? No hands. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So we've got problems of hard work. Let's have a break. Let me summarise what I've just taken you through. The thing you need to t here's what you're taking away today, because I don't want to waste your precious time. It's not about what the three-legged stool is. Look, out of balance. It's got to stay in balance. Here's what you need to know. You just need to know is if we take away decentralisation. Why does it become out of balance? All right? Okay, why does that happen? All right? Pitch yourself, you can answer that very easy. If we have decentralization, we have lovely rewards and no measurement, what happens? Okay? Or if we have decentralization and measurement but no rewards, what happens? That's what you need to know. Are we all clear on that? Class, do we have clarity on that? Yes. Yeah, is that good? Okay, have a five minute break. We'll come back and have some more games. All right? Good. Roy, thank you. I might just stop it for a moment. Oh, battery. Battery. <laughs>